Welcome to Weld.com. A while back we did uh, a layout of a pentagon and we were going to cut it by hand, 3 16 plate. This plate is kind of a pickled uh, surface and so it's fairly clean. I wanted to do a couple of things here with, with transferring these lines or darkening these lines. And one thing I want to get into real quick is, I think in a previous video I mentioned that I like to use a sharpened soapstone. I can't count the times that I've watched people do layout with an unsharpened soapstone piece, and you can tell that's a quarter inch. I've also seen it done with the rectangular. Um, but let's just say that I want to put a mark on here, and I've, and I've seen people do this, and they come over here and they put a mark on it, and it looks like that. Okay, well that's it's kind of big. And so if I want to cut accurately, I'm guessing which side of that do I cut on? And let's just say that we came in here and marked off uh, three inches and I put another big old fat mark on there. Well, if I want to cut an accurate piece, how am I going to work with that? So that, that's kind of my point. That's why I like to use sharpened soapstone uh, and I bevel this on a grinder, you can do it on a file. <clears throat> In any event, if you want to make an accurate mark, and I, let's say I want to lay out a three inch piece on here, then I can get very fine definition in line with the marks on the tape measure, okay? And you can kind of tell the difference here. So this is the piece that we had, that we were working with, and I've already got a Pentagon laid out, and we were going to cut these lines, and I said that I also like to use scribes uh, when I'm doing beam work, laying out bolt holes, bolt hole circles, anything that I'm gonna drill. Uh, and I tend to make a lot of tools here. I can take the blade off of this, but this seems very quick to me. I wanna transfer this with a, with a scribe, and I wanna scratch into this for the simple fact that, let's say that I'm gonna start cutting and my soapstone mark goes away from the flame. We don't want that, okay? So very quickly, I'm just gonna scribe these in. Now we mentioned cutting accurately with an oxyacetylene torch by hand. Uh, maybe in another video, I wanna, I wanna challenge a, a track torch to a bevel, so. Um, Let's, uh, let me get my gear on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna light a torch here in a second. I need to get my dark shield on and I wanna, I wanna use a couple of other items here that, for my hand cutting. So I'll be right back. Now welcome back. <clears throat> I'm gonna hand cut this uh, Pentagon out of this circle that we had laid out. And I have a, a super range type torch. I have a zero tip in here, zero three one hundred one series. I've cleaned it. I've set my pressures and this is a whole separate video, but metal thicknesses and pressures and cutting and the size of tip and everything. You know, I, see, I see some people that just, I mean, their cuts are impeccable. And it's interesting to note that, you know, the physics of a cut and the pressures and everything matter a whole lot. But anyway, for, for this little demonstration here, I have, I told you I made a lot of tools and stuff. This is my burn bar. Okay, 40 years ago, I learned to, to cut with one hand with a, with a guide. A lot of people use them. They're, they make them commercially. Some of them are magnetic. Uh, this I had machine cut. It, it's a piece of angle iron, but I also have a piece of flat stock on here that I've tacked. And I have a handle on the back side of it. I had the machine shop fly cut this, so it's very smooth. I don't bang it on anything. I also have a, about an eighth inch chamfer cut on here. And I just got through doing a, a, a little demonstration here of a test cut, but I use this for beveling. I can use it for straight cut, straight up and down. And what's interesting to note here is I, I told you I like to use these super fine sharp marks on here because quite literally you can line up one of the preheat flames right on top of your scribe mark, okay? What that allows you to do is use the edge of the oxygen flame and you can cut within a 30 second very easily. 
uh, a sixteenth. You know, if you want to oversize your cut and finish your grind and your sand, uh, you can get some real accurate parts. So I've got my pressure set at five psi acetylene, twenty on my oxygen, and I've cleaned my tip. I'm sure you can hear that ripping sound in there. That's a good tip condition for, for what we're wanting to do. Uh, very tight, very tight flame. You can see the oxygen jet going down through here. Let me make this cut and we'll talk some more. Back was I was a young man, I could make some super nice cuts and clean them with a file. Seems like the older I get, I get the high speed shimmies. Thank goodness for the burn bar. It's a it's a nice straight cut. It does need a little finish. It doesn't have a super amount of slag hanging on to it. I could go knock that off of the file. Again, the kerf that'll easily clean up okay so i'm going to turn this and just keep right on going maybe i'll make a better cut here <clears throat> when i said i had a good clean tip i know some of you can attest to this uh, i've set a tip down on some material get ready to cut knowing full well that my tip was real clean and the, and the condition was good and you're preheating your material to start your cut and a piece of mill scale comes up why does it always stick right in the oxygen hole and then disrupt your disrupt your flame it causes a turbulence you'll notice your flame comes back real short and that's when you end up with the heavy slag okay well, there's a turbulence around your oxygen jet down through here. All it, I mean, literally takes running your wire in one time, cleaning your, your tip out, and go right back to work. And then sometimes you can cut for hours and it never happens. Sometimes that piece of mill scale comes up and hits you in the face or goes in your eye. Even when you're wearing safety glasses and a dark shield like I am. Kind of coming off that radius point right there. I had to preheat that gently right on that edge so I could ease into it without blowing up the without blowing up the corner of the Pentagon. Let me go cool this off. Um, I don't, you know, I'm just going to cool it off, but I'm, I'm going to leave it alone. I'm not going to clean anything up as far as using the sander. I'm going to demonstrate how easy it is to, to zip these edges and make them straight and square and clean, get them ready to weld. I'll be right back. I went ahead and cleaned these off and I ran, the, <clears throat> I ran them on a 36 grit belt sander just to zip these off. I didn't spend a whole lot of time on them. Um, some of them, this is obviously just nice and straight and flat and everything. There's a couple of them that have some minor chips, I would say, in the, in the kerf. Still weldable. I mean, we're not getting super critical on this particular part. And again, this would be used for the base of the Pentagon. The very bottom plate, we would go ahead and knock some holes in so it would breathe and then fit these up, wire feed them. 316 welds real good with a, a corner to corner fit. 
You can gap them open a little bit, get 100% penetration, real super easy to work with. Um, so anyway, uh, a quick torch demonstration, pressures, clean tip, your layout, uh, things come together nicely. Don't have to spend a whole lot of time grinding. I've seen people cut and then they spend the next 10 minutes grinding to straighten up their cuts and everything. Make yourself a burn bar. I mean, simple, angle iron. I've got a handle on the back side. I've got a piece of stock here. I've got very, I want to say I've got three or four of these of various sizes. Some of them I will do detail beam work when I'm coping and cutting beams to intersect for structural work. So again, I, ho I hope this helps out. I know there's been some questions on how to lay out these panels. It doesn't matter if it's a pentagon or a hexagon or an octagon. You can lay these out, use a little geometry. There's several methods. You hit Google for some layout methods. Uh, one gentleman came back with that using trig. Uh, it all works, you know, it's all math and crunching the numbers. So I hope this helps, been a lot of fun. This kind of brought back some memories for me. The guy that taught me this 40 years ago, his name's Noel Putman. Uh, I worked as a construction millwright for Columbia Plywood while I was going to school at Oregon Technology, Oregon Institute of Technology in Klamath Falls. So Noel, if you're still around, I appreciate all you taught me. It's, I've used it a lot over the years. Again, thanks a lot. Subscribe to the videos. Bob Moffat with Weld.com.